Please join us for an afternoon of adventure with the Leagues of Adventure. In our campaign, the sky is no limit. Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Triple Ace Games, and I'm with some friends from all over the world. We've got uh, Anthony, who's our GM. He's based in Korea. And we've got Eli, uh, who's based in Puerto Rico. And we've got Ivan, who's based in the good old US of A. And yes, this game is coming from uh, several uh, time zones, so uh, this is all a bit of an experiment. And I'm Robin Elliott from Triple H Games, and um, I'm uh, going to be playing with these fine gentlemen in our game of Leagues of Adventure. We've actually played one session already, and um, we're going to give you a recap of, of that uh, first uh, adventure. Oh, look, there, there's the book. Yeah, you can buy it from our website. Uh, and uh, I'm going to hand over to Eloy, who's going to talk us through uh, our first session. Over to you. Uh, all right. So um, we have Anthony as GM, and we have uh, Robin playing Oscar Weingold, an inventor, and Ivan is playing Lawrence Garibaldi, an adventurer. And I'm playing George Mallory, an explorer. So we're all junior members of the Royal Geographic uh, society, and we are fame and uh, glory seekers. So, um, last session, uh, we learned that there is this um, outcast of the Royal Geographical Society named uh, George Challenger, who has a bad reputation as a sort of crazy man, and his latest scheme crazy. is that he thinks there are dinosaurs out there in the jungle because there was this expedition which supposedly found a portal into a high plateau in Africa where uh, dinosaurs still roam. Uh, he has openly mocked for this idea. There is even a society that has formed named the Challenger Society just to you know, make fun of this man. And they have actually funded expeditions to go and prove him wrong. Um, ourselves trying to make a name for ourselves and, you know, uh, gain some fame, uh, we've decided to try and actually fund an expedition or get an expedition funded uh, to prove him right. So uh, we figured that if we found some new means of transportation, that perhaps we could, you know, get there first and it, it, we could present it to various societies for funding. And uh, so we figured first thing we need is, need is uh, means of transportation. Um, Oscar, our inventor, has another inventor friend named uh, Roald uh, Neslinger, uh, who lives up in York. And he is also uh, a, a reputation, has also a reputation for being crazy. Uh, but uh, we, uh, you know, we made arrangements to visit him in York. Uh, and we found out that, that in his estate, he has a bunch of robots, and they are building various projects, including an airship uh, painted with um, anti-gravity paint. The ship is named the Epiphany. And so we present our plan to, to Nestlinger and convince him to loan us the airship uh, to go pursue this uh, adventure. Um, between uh, Lawrence, our adventurer, who is also something of a chemical engineer, and Oscar, our inventor, uh, the, the ship was, repairs were performed and, and the ship was made uh, ready. Um, I, as George Mallory the Explorer, tried to pen a letter of introduction to uh, Professor Challenger and that didn't go over so well. Uh, but we figure, hey, if we can show up with the airship, we got, you know, half of this battle uh, won. And so we did. We showed up at his estate uh, with the ship and convinced him that we could get there first. Uh, we, we crashed the party. That's <laughs> we crashed the party that we had. So uh, we managed to barely make a good impression on, on Challenger and... Uh, we actually found an important piece of information that the uh, previous expedition that found a portal is actually located 
in South America, not Africa. So all the other expeditions that are competing with us are headed in the wrong direction. So this gives us a further advantage. So we uh, took the opportunity to go to various societies, including the uh, uh, Big Game Hunters, the Hunters Club, the Epicurean Society, and the Travelers Club to, you know, get them to fund our expedition. The uh, Royal Geographic Society as well was our first port of call, right? A new discovery of a new place. We found out that uh, there seems to be that the, the, the Royal Geographic Society is aware that this may be a true thing because they have been, uh, there seems to be some interference being run at the high levels of this society trying not to get this expedition funded. Uh, so we know that there must be a rival there in the society who's not really thrilled with us and will have some competition along the way. But we managed to procure some funding. Next, we visited the Traveler Society and convinced them, you know, this might be the longest uh, travel by uh, anti-gravity airship anywhere. So, you know, it's an instant record setting for whoever goes along. So we got some funding from them. Then we went to the Hunters Club and convinced them, you know, what have you got to lose if we're going to the Amazon? Uh, you may get to hunt some dinosaurs, but if there's no dinosaurs, you're still hunting in a place which is inaccessible to most expeditions because we can get there by air. And so we procured uh, funding from the hunters as well. And finally, the Epicurean Society, we offer them the opportunity to a uh, partake of exotic cuisine again offering off you know uh, uh, dinosaur eggs and stuff like that uh and worst case scenario sample the cuisine of the uh seldom captured animals deep in the amazon forest oh and a big detail that i forgot is that we also installed a crane on the uh, epiphany airship right with the hopes of maybe capturing uh, a dinosaur or two to bring back to London. And I believe that's where we left it with some nice extra overfunded uh, expedition and, you know, looking forward to taking off. <laughs> that's right. So, with having secured excellent funding for your first expedition and playing these different leagues off against themselves and each other, you are very well positioned for a very comfortable trip across the Atlantic, expecting to make this trip much faster maybe than anybody ever has before. But the ship still needs crew and it needs provisions. Now that you have the funding, you can take care of this because it's Leagues of Adventure, we're going to be using uh, the expedition's skill to handle a lot of the incidentals of what you do or don't have with you. But this still takes time. Right. So for our opening, <laughs> let's go into procurement of some people or provisions that you'd like to have uh, aboard the Epiphany with you. And let's start out with uh, Proctor Johnson and Gamble Johnson <laughs> being tasked to move Oscar's uh, laboratory fully aboard the Epiphany. Oh. <laughs> the whole damn lab. <laughs> well, I need I need all these these bits of equipment. Come That's on, chaps. Right. Get uh, you know get get stuck in there. <clears throat> Cheer up, Proctor. Uh, I mean, we're headed to South America, and maybe. Maybe we can go swing by and visit Patagonia. Ah, yeah, we could become kings. Legends. Yes. Uh, you know, who knows how much money we'll get for the discovery of this. And if we manage to bring a live dinosaur, even better. I'm going to bring one back aboard the ship. It's insane. If you ask me, this whole thing is crazy. I mean, it's glad to be along, but... 
still. It's, it's a bit unusual, but uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So uh, it's our best chance to strike it big. Come on, chaps, less chit chat. Yeah, let's get these tools on board. <laughs> all right, all right. We've got the horses, man. We've got horses. We've got a long voyage ahead of us. Let me ask you though, do you trust us Garibaldi? <laughs> uh, he's a little bit of a loose cannon, but uh, he's 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 had some good ideas with a crane and and bringing back the live dinosaur. I think that's our best bet for for securing a small fortune and early retirement. Yeah, if we survive it. Any of those things have giant teeth. <laughs> that is so. Now my what understanding that? is that most of Oscar's tools are stored in this very large steamer trunk that is just at the capacity of Procter and Gamble, Johnson, no relation, to move. So as you're leaving Oscar's flat with you know, Oscar cajoling you the whole, the whole time to move faster, well, that's when maybe... You'll notice it. I have a perception check from the three of you, please. Oscar, Proctor, and Dan. Perception. You can, of course, take the average if you like, but the more successes you get, the more you'll notice. Bloody good. hell, I'm rolling two dice. So this is just <laughs> our, <laughs> our straight perception values that we get to roll in our double. That's right. Uh, yeah. I'll take the average because I know that Ivan will roll. So I'll, I'll, I'll secure us at least one success. If the shots they get a two, mate, I <laughs> they will see past me on freaking nose. I'm using uh, uh, I'm using uh, Triple H Games uh, proper ubiquity dice. Oh, that's really poor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, one success. One success. That's one great advertising. One success. Though. And. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I also rolled the average there we on Triple A's games ubiquity dice, which you know here they they the uh, return their reputation after that terrible. Uh, <laughs> I'm shocked, shocked that average rolling is going on in this establishment. All right, so <laughs> with with your inspiring one success on on perception, <laughs> we are. In the street, and of course, there's there's hansom cabs and and brooms and, and whatnot moving past, and there's there's little clots of, of people uh, going to and fro down this this uh, narrow and quite muddy street, and you're coming down the steep flight of stairs out of this high walk up down, and you know the impatient uh, driver is is trying to keep the horse steady, and he sees the size of this this giant, you know steamer trunk oh. you say ah, I don't know if it's going to fit this kind of thing and we're just about to get into an argument when the three of you see a small clot of what look like dock workers or, or physical laborers you know and they got their sleeves rolled up and they're they're posturing and they're cracking their knuckles and and they're trying really hard not to look like they're looking at you as they work themselves up to cross the street and accost you, oh, no. but you have spotted them before they have quite managed to screw their courage to the sticky place. Oh, Chris, get the thing, get the steamer trunk out of it. We've got to go. I think we've got to hurry. Well, I think uh, we go, go, go. Do you see them, Professor? Uh, let's let's move quickly. Shut the damn thing up. It'll fit. It'll fit. I'm pushing uh, and trying to get I, in there as fast I've as possible. I reluctantly uh, roll up my sleeves and give them a hand. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, this is now, this is servants' work. You know, this don't get my hands dirty. Shut up! We'll leave you here. <laughs> now, Oscar still has the style points left over from the last session. Uh, the hench people, however, are currently sitting at zero style. But the cowardice demonstrated by uh, by Proctor has earned him one point of style. Now, of course, there is a right way to load a trunk and a wrong way. Yes. And now with three people jostling it and uh, the driver uh, 
giving you attitude and the impending doom of the, the dock workers or whatever they are coming over to mash your faces, uh, things are not going as well as they could. All right. So what we'll need is uh, strength checks from Procter & Gamble to do the manhandling. As I said, this is barely inside their capacity to move. There's just one more tool and one more piece of this and one more item of that. And don't forget, it's very fragile equipment. There's stuff that can break. Yeah, well, so, I'm going to roll my... I, I mean, don't don't screw this up because if you drop it, I think it could get expensive. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. So it's double our strength for a strength check, right? Yeah, so I'm going to roll. That's right. So uh, you can, uh, one of you assist the other. One of you assist the other. Well, I've got, okay. I've got a strength of three, so. Yeah, and so do I. So I'll, I, I guess, uh, I can I assist you? Yeah, because I'm, I'm using my style to get this thing on here. And, oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Go for it. Yeah. I just, uh, my two assistance dice. So I'm rolling a large large pool of dice here. Nine dice. Ooh. Got I mean, do I take you, the average? What could go wrong? Roll them all. What could go wrong? I'll, I'll roll them all. I won't take the average. Oh, these triple ace games dice <laughs> have worked out very well. Okay. Six successes on nine dice. Wow. Out of curiosity, which dice are those that oh. rolled so well for you from Triple A's games? We've got the Leaves of Cthulhu dice, which rolled terribly well. And uh, we've also got some, my assistance dice, I'm using some all for one Régime Diabolique dice. Nice. And my, my style die, which did not work, is my Leaves of God Makara die. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't work this time. This time. But beautiful dice. Okay. So Procter and Gamble, uh, between them, managed to shoulder this up, you know, up on to the, the back where the, there's all the, the netting on the back of the carriage for holding large objects. And it visibly sags down on its leather straps and, and uh, iron springs. And, and uh, just as this crew of hoodlums realizes that all you have to do is hop into the thing and you'll be whisked off at trotting speed down the lane. So they begin to cross, you know, with a, with a, a pretty rowdy uh, cry out of, oi, <laughs> and possibly a mate tossed in for, you know, <laughs> divisive action. Where did he said to go? <laughs> Where's the coppers when you need them? <laughs> I'm jumping in the back with the, with the, with the, uh, with the uh, crate in, you know, into the back with the netting, just jumping in as fast as I possibly can. Go, man, go! I can see uh, you dropping your bowler hat at that point. Mm. <laughs> All the bowler hat's gone. <laughs> right, so the, the, the carriage driver is, is leaning over, you know, gesturing for Oscar to enter into the cab. He's oblivious to the, uh, to the threat of these laborers. In time, I'm shouting to the carriage driver, just go, just go. <laughs> oh, uh, this, this, this one of the latest, latest carriages with this newfangled uh, pneumatic suspension, I wonder. Let me just have a closer look. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him! <laughs> <laughs> On the average, no, it is not. <laughs> but, oh, improvements could be made. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll climb aboard. At this point. All right. Initiative, please, gentlemen. Uh-oh. I love it when people say, uh-oh, in response to an initiative. <laughs> that bloody hell. I mean, something <laughs> impending is about to happen. I've scored three. One. The average. Yes. Eight. All right. So the order of operations is Oscar, the thugs, of whom there are four, and you two. Thugs. Brazen men. So, um, are There's we lots of cracking, swaggering and pants pulling up as they come across the dirty street under the banner of, oi! I, I'm going to talk to them first, sir. Well, what seems to be the problem, gentlemen? Aha, trying to disarm them with your what? How would you like to approach this conversation? Uh, well, uh, obviously, uh, 
Uh, Your I, charm I, or lack thereof. Yeah, I, my, yeah, the... my charm and, and <laughs> lack thereof. And also, you know, uh, I want to avoid any, you know, dangerous situation. So I'm going to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to kind of, uh, just with the charisma, I think, uh, try and talk them down from whatever they're thinking of doing. It's a beautiful day, All gentlemen. Right. There's no need for any uh, nastiness. What, how can I help you? <laughs> how can I? I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So obviously, we're starting out in a position where they don't probably have anything personally against you. They've been hired, obviously, right. to uh, to interfere with your day. So to modify their reaction, we're going to do a double charisma check. Okay. Right. And you're going to have to beat their willpower. That's your difficulty. Uh, which, just for fun, I will reveal. You need to get more than uh, two successes. Okay, so my double charisma would give me four dice. I'm going to... I've got four style points. I'm going to... Use them all! Use them all! <laughs> I'm going to spend a couple of style points, and it gives me a dice pull of six. So... Uh, Take the average, mate. Just take the average. Get us out of here. <laughs> more success means the more you can modify their... I'm rolling. This is, this, I'm yeah. going to go for it. Four successes. That's Great. above average. There we go. Well done. Rolling the dice was good. Rolling the dice was good. In fact, both my style points came up. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Obviously, now right. they're charmed. They love me now, clearly. <laughs> they, they punished you for the first uh, <laughs> session. Oh, not the dice, the men. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, well, give us an insight in, into Oscar as, as other men might see him, right? You know, the, 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 uh, the man who has to work with his hands all day, who has to um, you know, constantly follow orders and, and whatnot. What is it about Oscar that's going to cause this connection and this willingness to consider breaking their employment contract to to rough you up? <clears throat> well, I think he's I think he's uh, he, he uses a lot of humor to high find. So uh, yeah, I think he he, he wants he's not uh, he's slightly absent-minded. He's uh, um, he comes across very you know, unthreatening. He's not. He's not a hero type character. Uh, bit thre not, but, but and of course he wants to avoid any unhealthy <laughs> situations. So I guess you know maybe they might feel a bit sorry for him and perhaps uh, <laughs> enjoy his humour to take their mind off of of the situation. Uh, so. <laughs> It would make them feel bad to rough you up because yeah. you're, you're so yeah. so nice and unassuming. Yeah. Yeah. As he takes, and he takes did you say that he's still distracted up. by the, uh, the pneumatic shock absorption system idea? There's an idea that now it's, now it's forming in his brain, so obviously, yeah, maybe slightly distracted by that. He just wants to, to get his notepad out and, and make some notes about it. Yeah, so. <laughs> And you said he took his glasses off? Yeah, he takes his glasses off, he gets a cloth, and, uh, yeah, he's sort of, uh... <laughs> So, you know, they had to work themselves up to the violence in the first place. And now, as, you know, they're losing steam as they're met in such kind, <laughs> kind fashion on the other side of the street. And so they just kind of drift over like a, like a boat with no motor you know, <laughs> to, to dock loosely around the carriage each waiting for someone to throw the first punch or to be threatening, but they're just now just standing around waiting for something to happen. Okay. So you said these are dock workers, right? They, they have that look. They have that them. look. Okay. Some nautical tattoos now that they're up. Uh, okay. Okay. Close to you. And, you know, burly and with, with heavy duty clothing designed for a lot of wear and tear, that kind of thing. So the first impression is like dock worker or, some kind of heavy laborer. Yeah. So can uh, can I say something as well? 
you're there, man. So uh, 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 Gamble uh, st stands up on the carriage and says, uh, uh, I say, gentlemen, uh, you look like Steve Doors. Uh, and uh, if you're in need of work, follow the carriage. We're off to an adventure. Uh, uh, and we're in need of uh, workers and uh, crew. Follow the carriage. We can, there are jobs to be had. So to well, try to help the persuasion effort. <laughs> well, what are the wages? Uh, and he looks, he looks at the professor and says, uh, uh, you'd have to speak to uh, uh, who'd, who'd be in charge of finances. Uh, out of the three of not, us. not Oscar. Not Oscar. Not Oscar. Okay. No, I say, so, I say, no. yeah. I wouldn't get married. Oh. So yeah. So you must speak to Mr. Garibaldi. Uh, uh, come with us. What have you got to lose? Well, we would lose the money that we're being paid to mash your faces into the cobblestones. <laughs> In the meantime, but that's a one-time thing. Yeah. Meantime, I have made myself as small as possible. I'm like just stuck <laughs> behind the crate, you know. Put put a little bit of like the burlap into the back of the of, the, of the carriage on top of me, and just really just got myself uncomfortably small. Okay. Another style point for the cowardly, yeah. <laughs> cowardly <laughs> proctor, and a style point me. back for Oscar. Oh yeah, right on. Nice. Unexpected reversal. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It's an expedition. Come on. Steady work. <laughs> well, steady work for how long? <laughs> Talk to Mr. Garibaldi. Several weeks, I'd say. <laughs> so they they go over to, to, to Oscar and say, so several weeks. Yeah, well, yes, we're going we're going on an extensive expedition. Find men like you, we can we can make use of. Food, room, Ooh. board, food, Absolutely, yeah. yes, the best in town. From behind the steamer trunk, right? Like half the space. <laughs> Some of the largest states you'll ever see. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's the clincher then. And so, unexpectedly, you have a, a small procession of your own normal uh, hench people and four additional uh, temporary followers that you'll have an opportunity to try and win over uh, during the course of the expedition. Of course, uh, that will depend on how many experience points you end up earning and, and the like and how much you care about these workers, but, but there you go. So uh, that procession makes its way uh, toward Dr. Challenger's estate where the Epiphany is, is still hanging uh, in the sky overhead, shrouded in London's big smoke. The next item, George, the expedition now has the capacity to outfit itself with the latest uh, maps of South America. Of course, there's a lot of blank spaces, mm -hmm. but we just so let's it. join. Yeah, <laughs> it's your job to put in pencil. <laughs> let's join George and Tanvir Singh, his close friend from his military days, uh, as they are procuring better maps, perhaps from the Royal Cartography Society. Yes. Which one of us will play Tanvir Singh, Robin? Uh, <clears throat> I'm happy to. So, yeah. Good enough. Okay. All right, so we're on the, we're on the way out of the, the Cartographic Society. You have uh, large tubes 
the maps, and I would like a, unsurprisingly, a perception check from you gentlemen. Perception. Ooh, okay. All right. So, uh, just the average two. That's good. Ooh, four. I do have slightly above the average, so that's good. <clears throat> so, okay. um, uh, say, Tanvir, uh, these uh, maps uh, must be as accurate as we can procure them. It'll serve as a fine starting point. Uh, uh, I'm sure, sir, I must know that these maps are going to be the finest in the Empire. Yes, yes. Uh, particularly since we'll be working from the air. So keeping track of these landmarks might be, uh, I don't know, might present some challenges. But... Uh, with a good start, a solid, good start from the map, we'll, we'll, we'll make do. It'll be great. It'll be fine. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it will. I mean, remember that time we got we got lost in the in the Hindu Kush, and and we only had that small scrap of a map. It still got us home. Of course it did. I mean, this is a full map. It's the best uh, we can get. Uh, it'll be no problem. I have a feeling that they spend a lot of time talking about their past adventures in, in some, <laughs> some campaign, uh, you know. <laughs> now across, across the way, there is an automaton. And during your stay at Philbin Castle, the estate of the inventor, Dr. Dr. Neslinger, you had the opportunity to notice the, the, the differences between different types of automaton, the, the ones that must be wound regularly, the ones that are capable of self-winding, and the ones that seem to continue without obvious means of, of winding, the automatic winding. And this had, had Neslinger and, and Oscar talking endlessly as, as the weeks went by, as the epiphany was, was getting ready. But one such self-powered automaton is across the way, and it's indicating to a very scruffy-looking group of, of well-muscled, uh, you know, very durably clothed men, laborers or uh, demobilized soldiers or something, but they, they definitely look down on their luck indicating, well, it has to be you in the thinning crowd of the late day, right? indicating you and those men begin to march forward with that look that you've seen all too often in, in bars and mess halls and, and whatnot around, uh, around the world of the man who's spoiling for a fight. Hmm. And how many are these? About four as well? or Again, four. Yes. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're being set for an ambush. I suppose that uh, uh, mysterious rival within the Royal Geographic Society is taking extra steps. Um, how should we handle this uh, thing? Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, I think we can we can take these guys. This is no problem. Uh, uh, let's set up an ambush. Let's uh, keep walking, duck into an alley, and uh, turn the tables on them. Uh, you you are carrying your your what what is what's the name of it? The Webley revolver? Is it? <laughs> you have a knife. I'm sure you have a cookery yeah. knife. Yeah. I have, the, so, I have a knife. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I don't uh, think I'm carrying uh, the gun because uh, we're in, we're in we're in yeah in, in England. London. So we're in London. We, you know. <laughs> Would be carrying my 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 good old service revolver, uh, but yeah, I, I'm sure we can take these guys. Look, there's there's hardly a fighter among them. This is fantastic. You got you got the two guys that are blasé and 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 overconfident as flaws yeah. in the face of real danger. Eh, in the face of right. yeah, well, <laughs> what could happen? Well, so we'll, we'll, what we can do is duck into an alley and. Uh, uh, I'll present myself as a target, and you can hide uh, and ambush them from from behind. 
Yeah, he's a ruffian, so be yeah. he's easily dispatched. Yeah, like, You're not like, expecting a real fight. <laughs> it'd be like that. It'd be like that time in back in Calcutta when we got ambushed <laughs> by twenty street urchins. We took them all down, and then uh, and then we went to the went to the club and had had a good drink, if I remember rightly. So. Uh, uh, these are ruffians. We'll rough them up and... Uh, we'll teach them a them. lesson. We'll teach them a lesson. Yeah, so that well, is our stop. brilliant plan. <laughs> one stop away for Ted Beer and one stop away for George as <laughs> they are completely unable to correctly assess the danger of the situation. <laughs> We're going to need that style point, yes. Uh -uh. Right, now, George, Sorry, George did have four successes. So things he notices is that they're not carrying any obvious weapons, no, you know, no brass knuckles or clubs or cudgels or, or saps or anything along those lines. They they seem to be expecting to be able to, you know, punch their, their way bare knuckle style. They brought fists to uh, a fight least, fight. That's right, they did. <laughs> beggars. But, uh, one of them has the, you know, the... The cauliflower ear and the mashed nose and the swollen uh, finger joints of maybe a semi-professional or at least uh, paid, if he wins, fighter. So maybe at least one of these guys is is dangerous, and the rest maybe his his flunkies or um, whatnot. So from a military standpoint, perhaps. There's a there's a way to take them out without having to fight all of them. Okay, let's uh, let's let's sort this out then. We'll teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll what duck. difference does it make? Yeah, we'll duck into so an alley. alley. Yeah, and then uh, you know, motion for Tanvir to to you know hide somewhere near the mouth of the alley waiting for them to pass and I'll just position myself further in and turn around to face the mouth of the alley. I'll find a doorway. Stand there. Okay. I'll find a doorway to kinda of hide in the chalet. Sure. And there's the the alley isn't very cluttered. You know, there's there's sections where uh, different types of trash and detritus have been piled up quite neatly. Which is a little bit of a surprise. You know, and there's there's heavy coating of soot on the walls and in the back of the alley, kind of turned away quite shyly, there is an automaton winding himself. <laughs> he looks over his, his shoulder and, and, and kind of flinches, and then with that kind of scratchy wax phonograph uh, voice, says, oh, ter terribly sorry, sirs, and begins to slowly and weakly shuffle toward the mouth of the <laughs> Move along, move along, chap. You don't want to be here in a few minutes. <laughs> so as he moves by, you see across the back, he has been flogged with oh. something, which has done nothing but mar the paint, really. Uh, but it does seem to have made an impression on its, uh, on its mind as it Jeez. sidles past. So it's just leaving the alley as... The thugs make their nonchalant, casual first pass by the alley, you know, the way that, that bullies do as they as they work themselves up to it, as they don't look down the alleyway. Okay. And one of them just falls off straight arms, the uh, the automaton which slams into the wall and then rebounds and apologizes profusely before <laughs> hooking right and heading back toward the cartographic society. Okay. And then they come in rushing. Initiative. Oh, jeez. Now, isn't there two ways these fellows can handle it? Can they, can they go uh, individually or three? Uh, couldn't the couldn't the la couldn't Tanvir actually just assist? Leaving George yes, to take all the damage. Initiative because he's he's you know hiding, and uh, he could. Yeah. Uh, he could boost uh, George's combat pools by assisting, uh, you know, making the combat even faster. Right. Mm -hmm. But of okay. course, George would take all the damage. <laughs> yes, George. George would have the option of, of figuring out where the damage went. 
<laughs> so he could he could remove his own lackey from <laughs> remove his own, his own yeah. follower. Yeah. Yeah, not care. <laughs> so I have three initiatives. Yeah, I got four. Okay, so we've got separate initiative, and they're rushing in. Both of you get to act uh, before they do. Before they do, George is standing out in the open. Tanvir is hiding. They don't notice uh, Tanvir at all. And they paid more attention to the automaton, really, than to anything else. So, so they're charging in. But the charge turns into the hesitant charge turns into tough guy walk by the time they get to where George is. Yeah, so we've got the, the scarred-looking fellow and then his his flunkies uh, arrayed so, behind him, kind of looking over his shoulder. So okay. George is removing his his gloves <clears throat> nonchalantly as they approach, giving them a stare. Uh, <laughs> what's Stan Veer up to? Because Stan Veer goes first, or, or you can delay, or, or I don't know. So I, uh, I want to surprise the, the two at the back. I want to jump and knock their heads together. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> so, uh, well, Tanvir, um, let's use athletics for that. Right. Okay. He's got a skill uh, level of four in that. Yeah. I'm going to use... And you're attacking from behind. Yeah. From surprise. So I'm going to give you two extra dice. Okay, and I'm going to spend that star point you gave me. All right. For a total of three successes. <laughs> so, a, bit, a little below average. All right. Well, it's good enough. Okay. So they are, they are startled, and their heads rattle together, and. They drop, not unconscious, but you know, stunned and surprised and in pain. One of them is holding his ear, and that's what he's saying, you know, very articulately and passionately. My ear! Right? <laughs> the other guy got it in the orbit of his eye, and he's like, "Ah, oh, my eye! No, my ear, my eye!" That's what you know, which breaks the concentration and cool of our lead tough guy, who now has to look back over his shoulder to see what these idiots are doing, and he's greeted by Tanvir Singh standing behind him, mm -hmm. and one, only one functional flunky. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so. Yeah, let's even things up a little bit. <laughs> so at this point, uh, George, who's been pulling off his gloves, uh, calls over, he says, well, uh, <clears throat> It looks like you boys weren't ready for a real fight. Uh, you came expecting uh, uh, scholars, perhaps, not trained soldiers. Uh, if you're looking for a fight, you've come to the right place. I suggest... Uh, uh, no, I suggest no. I'll say... Uh, uh, think twice if you really want to go through this. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try an intimidation check. <laughs> oh, right on. Yeah. So I'm going to put it. one point of style because I'm overconfident, right? So, you know, they can't. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You can do this. It's easy. And there we go. Three successes. <laughs> All right. Three successes. And you have, you have finished or successfully broken his will <laughs> to, to stay in this fight. I mean, he showed up with his with his his three buddies, and he was going to just wail on this guy, and and now everything is 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 falling apart. And so his his response is, "Oh yeah, what regiment were you in?" Twenty um, first Lancers in uh, uh, somewhere <laughs> or other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My cousin was in the 21st. I suggest it would be India. 
yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a sleeping <laughs> Bengal or something, but that's I don't you know anything about country. history, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he says, well, then, you know, uh, that you're way in over your head. Uh, pick your cronies up and get out of here and follow us no more. Uh, we're going to lose out on the, on the money for, for this. You couldn't spare a little, uh, you know. So tell me, are yeah, you, are you really good in a fight? Be honest now. Well, I can take a hit. Mm -hmm. And he That's... definitely has taken many hits in his, <laughs> in his career. It looked like it. Tenacity is certainly uh, an important trait. Uh, I'll do you one better. Uh, I won't be shaken down by ruffians on an alley, but uh, I am in the process of getting together an expedition. Uh, couple of fighting men, show spirit. I have use for you if you want uh, a job. Uh, you, you can see his thoughts are kind of transparent. You know, you can see him considering putting in a good word for his three associates. And then he just says very slowly and clearly, I'll take the job. Splendid. Meet us at... Uh, Professor's Challenger Estate, gather your things, uh, pack some clothes, uh, uh, bring any weapons if you have them, and uh, show up as soon as you can. What's your name, lad? My name is Flynn. And, uh, and, uh, In like Flynn. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> welcome aboard, and I, I go over and shake his hand. Shakes the bag, says, good, firm grip. And he's staring at the other three. And he says, uh, I'll wait a few minutes, and then I'll rough these guys up so they can go back and <laughs> prove that they, they put up a good fight, and maybe they'll still get paid. Splendid. Splendid idea. Come along, Tenveer. Hey. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you, and you just hear the sounds of, you know, <laughs> of hammer hitting meat. Pugilist. I'm going to put him down as profession. <laughs> That's right. He's a pugilist. <laughs> right. And <clears throat> the infamous Mr. Garibaldi. <laughs> now, Mr. Garibaldi is not uh, missing out on his opportunity for this for this sort of stuff. All right. Now you also have to close out your uh, your estate, as it were, your lodgings, because you're going to be away for a while, and uh, perhaps notify family that you are leaving. And you're there with with Grover, your valet. Who's, who's portraying Grover? I don't have his stats, and Robin did an excellent well, job yeah, last time, so him. I think, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. Everything and everything else, yeah. he sent me both Tanvir and uh, Grover, so. <laughs> right on. Oh, please. I like okay. Dr. Grover. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Ready when you are, <laughs> sir. So, yeah, you so as, you, as you arrive at your, at your flat, in London, uh, what you think of as your flat, of course, lots of, of big open rooms. Um, usually, Grover would, would meet you at the door. But the door is slightly open. And you can hear some scuffling of, of feet and, uh, yes, sir, may I help you, sir, is kind of faintly wafting on the, on the evening wind. And you get a a quick auditory impression that someone might be holding Oscar in a some kind of wrestling grip. Not Oscar, I'm sorry. Uh, Grover. 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 Some kind of wrestling grip uh, laying in wait for you to enter. Oh, 
this is exciting. So I, I slip in my, my, my hand in my pocket and put in my brass knuckles for the first time in my life, never having actually used them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, walk in, I start to walk up. I say, Grover, we have company. Y yes, sir. Uh, uh, they don't seem to want the tea, sir. <laughs> Oh, well, this is the this will be thrilling. Just to come before the event, so I'm, I'm going to kind of burst into the room where I believe they are. So you right, the door slams open, and there's a, a variety of of your personal items neatly packed and and stowed, and you know shoes polished and uh, umbrella mended and all that nonsense. Uh, but there are two very large men, one of whom is is holding. Grover, his feet swaying slightly above the ground, the, the richly carpeted floor, right? but he's still ramrod straight, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and the other, you know, moving I can, in. I actually imagine him still holding the tea tray, trying to keep everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good drop. <laughs> oh, for the love of God, man, put him down. What's this all about? Well, this guy is moving in to uh, to clean your clock. Initiative, please. Kind of better have better initiative than my flunkies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, my initiative. I've got one hell of an initiative, which is uh, oh, it's five. Okay, great. Let's see. How many? That's, that's decent. Yeah. <laughs> that's decent. Forgot to write down the secondary stats on my sheet, so I have to do it in my head. But thank God, math is easy. Oh, four successes. All right. Nice. Not bad. Five dice. All right. You're definitely going first. This guy is waiting across the room. He's got this look on his face like he's going to teach this, you know, effete society boy, uh, you know, what's what, you know, with his with his big meaty fists. But he's moving so slowly. It's almost like he's moving, you know, against the wind and through the water. And, and the fist is coming. Ooh. I'm grabbing the hot pot of tea on the tea tray that Grover's bouncing and passing it into his head. You gonna bash it or are you gonna throw it? I'll throw it. I'm gonna throw it. <laughs> hot Not pot of tea. The tea pot the <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the best chunk. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have at it. All right. And then uh, that's ten dice. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I want to do a called shot for his head. All right. Are you thinking about investing some style? Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm just point of style for the obsequious Grover. That was awesome. Yes, that was great. <laughs> Try to remember what head is in terms of negatives. Uh, let's go with a minus four. Okay. And he's using his full defense, so let's see. That's... Uh, Losing four dice, but I'm going to use. I have eight style points. Good lord, man. Yeah. Order. I, well, listen, there was nothing stylish for me to do at that time. So let's. Oh, see. so it's my fault. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so I'm going to use. Uh, this is really important. I use four of them. I'm just going to really try to like take this guy out. You know. All right. So I'm back to rolling ten dice. Uh, ten I don't dice. know. If they, I don't know. If they, now, are you just worried about doing damage, or, you know, are we uh, going for that specific area of the head? You're calling the head specifically? Yeah. All right, so with it's intent to burn blind? Yeah, burn blind, yeah, that's really the whole idea. All right. Oh, Goodbye to the pot. Sorry, Grover. <clears throat> that's, the, that's the finest food we have. <laughs> Not that one, not sir. The, not the Royal Staffordshire Spode where? No. Okay. I suppose the pot doesn't have to die, but not there. All right. All right. Here we go. Call the Kevin Black. Six. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm doing that right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Don't roll too many dice, sir. Imp improvised weapons, do they add any any dice? I think it depends on what the weapon is. It depends on what it is. It depends on what the weapon is, and because we're going to wind up with some caustic damage oh. if this all works out, oh. <laughs> I'm just going, I'm yeah. just going to blow past that detail and focus right. on the yeah yeah the cost yeah. of the damage. 
six successes, three of them on the style of the dice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Against the school. Right. Not the Wedgwood, sir. <laughs> so how many successes was that, sorry? Six. Six. Gross. Okay. So the pot, the, the teapot hits the target. It more uh, than takes enough force from the impact to shatter, unleashing its its searing oh, yeah. cargo of boiling tea <laughs> and tea bags, or whatever. At least tea. No tea bags. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that silver ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So it it shatters around his head. You know the the, the spout going one way and the handle going the other. And for a minute, his his head is framed in this, this spherical uh, globe of boiling tea. He begins to scream and goes down like a polack steer, you know, holding his 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 hands to his face, you know. And uh, the guy holding Grover very carefully puts him down. And adjusts his shoulders <laughs> and brushes, and then bows and tries to leave. Take him with you. <laughs> yes, sir. And he goes, scoops him up under the armpits. The guy's going, my <laughs> You can almost hear it cooking, you know. <laughs> and there's a smell of roast pork, flash oh, fry. <laughs> And he pulls him out of the out of the room, and there's a little the, the spout is spinning on the hardwood floor <laughs> over by the. Grover rushes over and starts picking up the bits of pot. Oh, the Wedgwood, that was the. Don't forget the forget the forget the teapot, oh, Grover. Oh, that was exhilarating, no, wasn't it? You're right, man. Be able to replace this, sir. Perhaps, perhaps I can repair it. Oh, no, no, no. When we're, we're done with this, we'll have all the Wedgwood you could ever want. <laughs> Fill the entire dining room with Wedgwood. Don't tease me, sir. No, we're, we're, no, we're gonna. This is gonna be great. We're gonna be famous. I'll be famous, and you'll be my right hand man. Yes, sir. Two points of style for the thrill seeker, and one point for the obsequious Grover and the, and the valet. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea why this happened. <laughs> All right. They must really be out to get us. This is gonna be one the moment. Next <laughs> the next day, Challenger Estate, aboard the Epiphany. Uh, crew are beginning to show up. Uh, the chef from the Epicurean Society is outrageously French. <laughs> is there any other way to be? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> there are many ways to be French. His way is Outrage. outrageously French. <laughs> he has excellent mustachios, right? <laughs> curled four times to a razor point, almost. Right, thick black. His hair is slicked back, and he wants you to refer to him as Jean Claude, not because that's his name, but because he hates the way that the English pronounce his real name. <laughs> What's his real name? <laughs> <laughs> I will not tell you. <laughs> you English. You English dog. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, contrary to expectations, you might expect a, an expansive girth from from Jean Claude, but he is, is actually ridiculously fit. You know, he would give you know the statue of David a run for his money, and he often, in conversation, like when boarding the the Epiphany or when inspecting the kitchens, he'll find an excuse to pose. <laughs> <laughs> but he's immaculately dressed and uh, and polite to a fault, and his fame has preceded him. There are restaurants across uh, the city that that fights for this man, but he is coming 
to be the first to develop recipes. Yes, dinosaur cuisine. <laughs> so there's one heated moment, actually, with you three gentlemen, just out, after he's finished inspecting the kitchen, and he lets you know, if I find nothing on this trip worth my time as a chef beyond compare, I shall never forget you. Ever. Then you'll be in good company, because no one will ever forget me. <laughs> ever. <laughs> but I assure you, my good man, you will not be disappointed. Your time will not be wasted. There will be dinosaurs or exotic animals at the end of this trip. Uh, mark, mark my words, there's no way this can go wrong. I will remember that you have promised. <laughs> and then he... Rubs his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and exits the room with a finality that only a man such as this can command. <laughs> He's got really nice teeth. <laughs> okay. I think I like him. <laughs> you also received word that uh, Edmund Burke, a different Edmund Burke, of the Hunters Society will be showing up tomorrow afternoon with his retinue. And uh, he's, well, he'll be one of the last to arrive. The other thing I was thinking, do we have, are we, are we piloting this ship? Are we going to hire like a, a professional pilot? Well, if you want to be piloting in 24 hours a day, are we going to have to? Yeah. You need at least know. a backup pilot. Yeah, yeah we will. Well, Oscar, we got plenty of money. We're going to hire a whole retinue of pilots, one for every day of the week. Well, okay. But we need, Let's I not get carried away. <laughs> I think we need to, right. to you know, find, the, find somebody with, with uh, excellent uh, uh, qualities, but also um, has adventure in his heart. Because where we're going, we need somebody that's going to really you know, take this ship and handle it so well that we're, we're not going to fail from, from lack of lack of skill of piloting. Now, when you say excellent qualities, Oscar, you mean like better than that group of men you brought? Well, they were, they were, they, they were, they were there just to help with, uh, you know, stoking the boilers and, and you know, polishing the deck. Uh, oh, or my what, God. What, whatever, whatever those sort of sailor types do. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, we don't need to go into the good. details. Mm -hmm. Steve doors. We can certainly always use somebody to move the, uh, the the cargo and the crates. Exactly. Uh, we got crates. Uh, we're going to have to capture dinosaurs. I mean, at worst, they can be bait for the dinosaurs. Yeah. Can't they? I mean, certainly, it's better than being beaten up by a bunch of them. That's for sure. It's better, better to hire them than uh, than be you know behind their uh, their fists, so to speak. <laughs> I've got one word of advice for you. Oh, yeah. sure. You're a Brit. You're an Englishman. Always have tea. Absolutely. Indeed. We'll save Absolutely. you from many, many, uh, many an accustomed. Well, I always find that if life is getting difficult or you're in some kind of perilous situation, a damn good cup of tea always solves every problem. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Like how the British Empire is built on tea and medals. <laughs> <laughs> and in our version of the the British Empire, understanding and uh, a desire to share absolutely share the technology medals. and <laughs> share the medals. So we can compress a lot of that hiring phase into the expedition's role or preparation. Right. So we do need to hire a crew. 
We need to hire a crew for a lot of different things, as you've said, piloting the ship, taking care of the ship, minor repairs. Some of the automata that you have, that have come with the ship, can handle some of that, but you know, a, a live crew might be more beneficial. So if you'd like to pool uh, two of you together to, to handle all of these preparations, we can do so with your expeditions. Now, some of you may have uh, different areas of expertise in expeditions, such as funding or, or gear or equipment. This is the general expeditions role. I, I have five dice on expeditions. I have five dice on expeditions. Okay. We can assist Sounds like you guys so that you can work together. Yeah. Okay. You're hiring a crew, right? Yeah. Listen, have you guys read Treasure Island? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Now, before you roll, are there are there any skills uh, from the person who will be doing the rolling that you would think might qualify for a synergistic effect? So in, I think that my skill in aerial piloting, even though it's mm. you know, it's it's okay, it's not going to be expert, but at least I can understand terminologies, uh, recognize whether somebody that's supplying for for a pilot, a pilot's job, would know what they're doing. So that might help. Right. That sounds good to me. So why don't you do the roll, add two extra dice, and then add two extra dice again from George. Okay, so the total of two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, nine dice. Four successes. Woohoo! Okay. Pretty nice. So, of course, uh, that is a difficulty zero roll. We're seeing how uh, prepared you're going to be. So, with four successes, where would you like the, the benefit to lie? in doing it quickly or doing it well? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Oscar doesn't have any idea of, of you know, a sense of, of, of time <laughs> or, you know, you know <laughs> or how pressing things might be. Uh, it's, the, uh, furthermore, uh, uh, George is overconfident, so he's like, "Just take your time and do it well. You know, we'll get there. It'll be fine." It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got a bit of a head start because they're they're looking, and the other the other teams are looking in the wrong place. Our ship is faster. We'll, we'll get there before yeah. anyone. Else. So let's let's do it properly. Are you not done yet? Can we go? Can we go? <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Lawrence. In the deck. Typical American just wants to get out of there and doesn't plan properly. American. You're American, aren't you? I was British. No, I'm British. You're British, are you? Okay. Yeah. With with American heritage, no. obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Repatriated. <laughs> Sorry, calm, me, sir. Calm, calm down, Lawrence. We'll we'll be going soon. We just have to make sure. So we've got the right crew in place. There's too, right. many, there's too much at stake here now. <laughs> so with your focus on doing it, your, your focus on doing it right, um, I will, as I, I portray or as these crew members come into the action, there will be fewer flaws that cause significant problems. And there will be more opportunities for synergy between the crew members and yourselves or for assistance roles for them to help you out rather than uh, them being at odds with you. And you will have the opportunity to fill every crew slot and have you know proper watches so that no one is, is operating for too many hours out of the day. Right? So that will also spill, spill over into the epiphany being in the best shape possible, considering its own specific quirks and your uh, 
engineering roles to, to get it back into operational status. So this is not this is not bad at a cost of possibly being the first out of the gate or um, at least close enough to whoever might have been first to to potentially close the gap. Right? So it's not uh, the, the trade off still has its benefits, right? Eventually, and let's emphasize that word eventually. <laughs> Your expedition is ready to go. Um, What's wrong with that guy? He's probably not drunk all the time. <laughs> Take him ever. Finally. <laughs> we get going. Got one through five, all, A through five all wound up. <laughs> a through eight hundred <laughs> <eight hundred times. laughs> times. Dr. Challenger, who's, who's famous for being awful. After the initial agreement, after the, you know, the honeymoon wore off in a sense, sometime around the afternoon of the very next day, right, you've achieved funding from uh, the Travelers Society and you had a line in on the Epicurean Society and somewhere around that afternoon before you even met with the Epicureans, he was already convinced that you were never going to leave, that, uh, you know, you're, you're just all frauds and hucksters. And then the, you bring in the, the big game hunters and it's, oh, now it's all just going to be a circus sideshow and everyone's going to forget the science and no one's going to, you know. And, uh, so two weeks later, when you're finally ready to go, <laughs> he has written 10 page essays slandering the expedition character assassination disavowing his own <laughs> it has nothing to do with, with any of you uh, but these have been helpfully intercepted by his own staff <laughs> who have taken a liking to well Oscar in particular not Oscar uh, to Grover in particular <laughs> <All right. laughs> he's you know ingratiated his way into the staff so, you know, in a, in a rage, Challenger will stay up all night writing this, this fiery, poisonous letter, which he then hands off to his valet, who then hands it off to Grover, who changes it into, you know, expresses some concern about the delays. Look at this one here, it's a doddering old fool. I think that means you, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> the idiots, they're wasting time. <laughs> Which becomes, you know, taking the time to, to get yeah. it right. Proper, properly prepared. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think petrol okay. school boy refers to? Yeah. <laughs> Boldy, so you're ready to test the biscuit. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please. So, uh, we will we'll go. Let's do this. Let's. Let's uh, fly. So, right. so without without any fanfare, without uh, with, without saying farewells to family, loved ones, or any of that, you'll just slip off during the night. Or, or do we want to uh, come back? Oh, do we want to get... wait? Wait. Uh, uh, uh. Don't we want? Did, does any 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 of our characters we... actually crave? Uh, publicity we, they want the press down yes we, we want the photographer to come along with us and we want uh, uh, I, I should think George would push for a, for a big send-off right to, to, to you know announce it on the papers uh, you know when, when we negotiate to, to, to get a photographer to come with us uh, or some sort of reporter yeah. will we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get uh, news of a departure beforehand right so people will show up to witness the the maiden voyage of the epiphany as it attempts uh the transatlantic break. voyage or whatever that's what i forgot no. No. in what? those two weeks i want to hire a chronicler photographs are great uh -huh. but i want somebody to write about me <laughs> <laughs> It's like the yeah, like the guy in what is it? Uh, uh, Unforgiven. 
the, the duck of death. What is it? <laughs> Duke, I say duck. <laughs> I don't care about going into details of it unless you want to, but I just want somebody there to write about me and about Lawrence okay. Carabelli. Yeah, it, it's now, starting the, in the latest Penny Dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> the photography option, you have quite a number of people to choose from. But the two best presents you with a difficult challenge. Right? One of the two best photographers is a man, but has, uh, well, let's say, has had a long career, long enough that there's a lot of snow on the roof. But his shots are, are, are beautiful and his connections are well established. The other option is quite young and healthy and uh, is very tenacious socially and very outspoken socially and uh, has made a lot of connections herself. Uh, I want you to write about us. But this is the reporter, right? This is the reporter, the photographer. For the Photographer. So you have a choice between an old man or a young woman. No, young woman, but I'll tell you why before you jump to any conclusions. Uh, <laughs> no one's jumping to conclusions. <laughs> it's a young person who's hungry to make a name for herself, right? And that matches our desire for fame and glory. Um, so I think that's more in the spirit uh, of, you know, taking a risk. And since uh, George is all about fame and overconfidence, uh, he's clearly ready to, you know, uh, bring on a crew that has as much to gain from the expedition as the rest of us. It's like, you know, it's important to be hungry. Right. Yeah. Then, before you leave, imagine this. You're stationed in the courtyard of Dr. Challenger's very unusual house. Remember, it was the, the square house with a central courtyard mm -hmm. where the fourth corner was where the gate is, where the, the house doesn't quite meet. Okay, And he gets excellent natural light around four in the afternoon. And hanging overhead of this immense square house is the epiphany. And what she, and her name is Anne, the unassuming name of Anne Smith, what she wants is to shoot you against the backdrop of the gables of the house, the epiphany overhead, and the sky in a heroic, you know, upward pose. Which means you're going to have to be perched up on some barrels and, and you know, striking a, a dramatic pose. And for the days leading up to the launch, she wants to do a feature on each of you with your dramatic photograph. <laughs> now, this dramatic photograph could look ridiculous or it could look very powerful. And this will depend almost entirely on your charisma. Ah, ah I was hoping it would come to that. <laughs> I was afraid it would come to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a double charisma check. And, uh, mm -hmm. This is a historical mm -hmm. aside. I live 10 minutes away from where the first photograph was ever taken. Really? Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. What mm -hmm. was it a photograph of? A window. <laughs> a window. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. I'll I'll put a point of style in this. I don't want to mess it up. Oh, and I it's see, double. I, I four dice. I've rolled three successes. Yes. Nice. So this this is going to be the first in many photographs. <laughs> uh, my chronicle. So I'm putting four style into this. And rolling eight oh dice. my god! Oh, I was. It's important. You use style for when it's important. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That but is when, true. Not when you're in peril, but when you want a decent photograph. <laughs> this, that's peril. This is this is we're talking about. You know how how this reviews me. Your glory and reputation. Yes, it is exactly. Important. Yeah. 
and that is that he is doesn't, five. He doesn't have a reputation. Oh, nice. That's five. I mean, of them will. Of them. He will. <laughs> and listen, that's five of them, and four of them were on the style dice. Nice. Nice. Oh, cool. so worth every worth every penny. Microdice game style dice. Uh, where can you get those dice? Uh... Triple, that's AAA safe com. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. For all your games. No games. reason. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, I would like you to make a permanent note of those successes. Okay. And I want you to start thinking about exactly, you know, how how you were posed and uh, and what went into it. And we'll talk about it in, in future installments and, and episodes of this particular uh, expedition. But uh, remember this when it's time to have your meetings and dine out with the elite of London telling your story as you are working your way toward more status, more fame, more rank in your, in your different leagues. All right. So finally, with fanfare, then, right, there are all the neighborhood kids surrounding Dr. Challenger's house, and he's screaming from this upper window for them all to get away. <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, a representative from from the palace is there, uh, very very stiff and very very proper, and of course represent representation from the leagues. There was a smear uh, article and editorial in the newspaper for the last two days talking about uh, all dredging up all the old stuff about Challenger, all the old stuff about Neslinger, and uh, and in the, the end papers, deep in the editorial section, it goes into how crazy uh, anyone is to trust uh, Neslinger's idea of a formulation for anti-gravity paint, which is why uh, this program was scuttled for the aerial defense of, of uh, the Empire, that uh, these devices spend more time floating up into the outer reaches of the atmosphere or hurtling down in a fiery ball into the, into the Earth than they ever have flying straight and level. And while they can't fault your bravery, as members of an expedition, they can fault your intelligence. You know, yeah, stuff like this. It's just, <laughs> and, and you heard a rumor, but no proof that this expedition was hotly debated on the floor of Parliament uh, whether or not it should be allowed, you know, for the safety of its citizens to go forward. But this this proposal, if indeed it happened, was shouted down uh, by people who want to see uh, it either succeed or fail. This is fantastic, fellas. You see all this? You see all the press we're getting? It's publicity, yes. It's incredible publicity. <laughs> we'll be, we'll go down in the annals of history. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's fantastic. Right. Infamous. Now, who will be who will be piloting the ship for its inaugural uh -oh. days? <laughs> will it be Oscar? Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be, isn't it? <laughs> of course it's going to be. <laughs> um, yeah, because he spent he spent a lot of time getting it right and you know fixing it up. And I guess at this point he's probably going to be quite attached to all this machinery. And uh, you know, even though we've employed an, an experienced pilot, it's going to be it's going to take him a couple of days to really kind of step back and let somebody else take control of his uh, pride and joy. So, uh, let's, let's fly. This is, what could go wrong? All right, so we need to plot a course, and then we need to, to pilot on our way toward the deep jungles of South America and the ostensible Lost World Plateau. So in what part of, do we know exactly whereabouts we're heading to in terms of uh, South America? What is it? Are we making a layover in, in Brazil? I, I suppose we in, in deep, Rio. deep in Brazil. In Brazil, okay. Is there is there a layover? Are we going to fly to uh, somewhere to to take a break? 
Uh, yeah, I, I suppose as soon as we cross the Atlantic, right, we'll have to make a, a stop. What, Bermuda, what's the, probably. Especially on the way. Uh, and yeah. Smith, depth. This is a good idea for more publicity and to, to round out the story. And she's gotten this, a shadow lately. She's being followed around a lot by Tanvir Singh. <laughs> Self is taking a lot of notes, and uh, they get involved in deep discussions about how best to, to you highlight know, your character. What we could do is we could, we could fly south. We could go through, uh, we could go through Spain. Then, and then and then head down the coast of Morocco, down to uh, mm. Dakar, and then head across to Brazil. Maybe that's the way to do it. Or it's your expedition. Manage it wisely. We could, or uh, alternatively, could fly straight across the Atlantic and head down the uh, eastern seaboard of America, down through. Uh, um, the Caribbean. Oh, uh, I, I like that. Think of that. The Americans, haughty, proud, all this. When you show them, ah, you don't have one of these, do you? The only thing about doing the going south is that we are almost looking like we're heading in the same direction as all the other other expeditions that are, that are searching for this. Looks like we're heading to, to Africa. Oscar. It took you how long to fix the ship, then two weeks to hire the crew? They're all gone. We couldn't possibly distract anybody. <laughs> Just that fly right true. there. Is there, there is some truth to that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's my suggestions. Um, what do you think? The American idea or the African idea? Fly right through the Caribbean, really. But if you want to go, the, go down the eastern seaboard, that's fine too. Get some publicity from them. The Americans are all about the news. Okay. What about you, George? What do you say? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, the more territory we can cover uh, across the Atlantic in one go. The riskier it is, the uh, the greater fame we shall accrue. Ooh. So so instead of skirting south to uh, through through Africa through northern Africa, then perhaps we can uh, cross uh, to the Caribbean. And uh, and you know it's a it's a it's a southwesterly course, and it covers a great swath of the ocean it'll be uh, uh, uh i hear puerto rico is a lovely place to be yeah it could be, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> and gentlemen i hate i hate to you know crash any kind of ideas of sightseeing but we did tell them the travelers but we could get there in five days that is true so the most direct route uh, that's should probably be a yeah 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 we'll have to make landfall somewhere in northern brazil uh, I don't know many cities in Brazil. Is it Manaus? That's not. Uh, uh, oh, there's one called so, Belém. Yes. Belém seems to be yeah, northerly near the mouth of the Amazon. Not exactly at the mouth of the Amazon, but it seems to be like the closest settlement. Belém. Sounds good to me. Oh, what happened to them? They're they're gone. They're missing. And then we show up. They're not dead. Oh, that's true. Do we know exactly where the uh, the the survivors from the expedition are? They brought them down the Amazon. Okay, so so they might be in the, that because I think that's the largest city near the mouth of the Amazon. We just fall the damn river. We're in the air. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, the, the survivors are then probably at Belém or Sao Luis. I don't know how we we don't need to talk to them. How could we miss it? We're flying over the, the jungle. Oh, there it is, big plateau, and holy crap, what's that? <laughs> uh, I suppose, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! Uh, look at the size of that thing. Well, let's set, let's set course for the mouth of the Amazon then. 
and we'll figure out, uh, depending on, uh, you know, how, how good our speed is, uh, we can adjust the plan on the fly. So we'll set course straight for yeah. Belém in, in, in Brazil, in the mouth of the, mouth of the Amazon. In a, in a rare have, moment of seriousness, or, uh, or uh, this is the right word, behaving like a responsible adult, Lawrence <laughs> will roll up his sleeves and, and, make, and maintain the chemical batteries of the ship, <laughs> as he knows that's that it's quite important. Right? That's where he's going to focus a that lot of his good. time. That is good. Okay. <laughs> So I th right. think uh, maybe I can assist the piloting role with that uh, survival for, for planning the sure. trip. I don't know if yeah. that... Uh, yeah, okay. So we don't yeah, have okay. You can involve the, the other pilots uh, to, to, to handle navigation duties or... Yeah, you know. survival includes navigation, so I should be able to at least provide assistance for a pilot. Yeah, that also gives you a reason to be on the bridge when the, the inevitable photographs are taken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, All right. let's, let's roll that. Let's roll. So it's clear skies, and you know, you're setting the, the day that you're departing. So the difficulty is, is zero. The successes are the successes. Go for it. Three successes above average. Nicely done. That's right. Wait. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got five dice. That, that includes the two dice from me from assistance, right? Oh, sorry. No, I didn't. Hang on. Ah, oh, there you go. See, it sounded a little bit. Um, sounded like. Things haven't really improved much. <laughs> <laughs> so. Thanks Overconfident to, bastard, give you a bad uh, information. Thanks to, <laughs> thanks to the assistance. Uh, uh, he just uh, drew yeah. a straight line on that. that way. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this uh, way. <laughs> our, our situation has not improved. Let's be perfect. <laughs> three is uh, three's more than adequate. And so you're, you're maintaining good speed against a uh, light headwind. And very soon are out over the Atlantic. And there are, of course, many surprised boaters and, uh, you know, lots of, of, you know, waving people. When, of course, you leave your, your point of origin over the Challenger Estate, the, the, the children of the neighborhood run screaming down the streets. But they completely underestimated how quick <laughs> the epiphany is, right? And it it doesn't have you know a roaring fuel powered propeller driven engine right it has these very large fans, but the ship operates with a deep throbbing hum and the occasional crackle as lightning walks across the top of the chemical batteries down in the engine hold. So um, those who do not have curly hair in the engine compartment soon will. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm fine with that. Uh, I've wound so that Delta. Of... I'm going to wound that <laughs> Delta to help me out. And I'm also making sure right. that, that my, my, uh, my, uh, my chronicler, Percy, so the Percy old boy, this is the heart of the ship. This is where the real action is. This isn't constantly maintained. All hell breaks loose. This is the only thing keeping us Fine. <laughs> and, and only I know how to do this well. That's know, amazing. Never know the understated. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a chemistry check to see about the health of the batteries. Um, it has been now, just over three weeks since you reformulated and installed them. Right, right. And right. you had been shooting for five days ago, you know, five, uh, five days to launch. Uh, so what, what condition are the batteries in? Ah. And this, my friend, this is at difficulty two. So they get difficulty two. Okay. Well, because it's just important. 
and I'm only rolling two dice, not four dice, because I've got Kevin three, four. I use my last style point. Roll five dice, please, for the love of God. Do I just roll one die, or do I go for broke and see if I can I can roll like really high? Hmm. Oh, what's right. your what's your how many what's your dice pool? Uh, it's five. Oh, okay. Well, you so could take, take two I, and I, and 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 roll one. If you want to take good. the average. So it's two to three successes. Or I can go on the chance of maybe getting a four. Or possibly risking a one. Or well, maybe getting fear. Exactly. <laughs> but because it's an adventure, even though you think it means less dice less often, I'm rolling. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bought all these damn dice. And it, oh, it is four successes. Oh, nice. Yes. Triple H games, dice, do it again. <laughs> I won't tell you about last week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're not discussing last week again, no. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. The batteries uh, should not be pushed to the ship's top speed. Would have been fine a week ago. Would have been great two weeks ago. But now they you know, have already begun to corrode. And for much of this trip, you're going to be have, you're going to have to take some of the batteries offline to clean the connections and to restore the chemical balance. So no easy trip for you. You're actually going to earn your pay. Mm. First of all, so don't detect. touch this green crap. You get this on you, it'll dissolve your finger. <laughs> dissolve your head right off your body. His hero worship is visibly growing. Yes. We need a name for the green stuff. I would, I would toss it carbolic acid again, even though it's not exactly <laughs> what it is. But No, it's not. Electrocarbolic acid. Electrocarbolic. There we go. <laughs> Electric carbolic acid. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. The, 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 crew, the crew call it emerald salt. <laughs> <laughs> now, gents, within a few days of launch, you experience a small storm. The, the epiphany is more than capable of rising up to go over it, so it doesn't present much of a threat. You do find that it operates best at a fairly low ceiling, right? maybe 200 feet above sea level, gives uh, the stablest ride. Right? The hum is at a moderate uh, volume, and the occasional discharges of, of lightning through the, the engine room are less light-threatening. <laughs> every time one Every time one goes off, I'm just like, you know, like a little kid in the fireworks display. Whoop! Did you see that? <laughs> Everybody gets up off the floor. <laughs> you know. But on the toward the end of the second day of, of travel, with the sun setting over the Atlantic Ocean, you catch sight of a very long and lean, high-powered looking dirigible. And through the use of a telescopic device, you can see that it has a cupola on top, which has some kind of mounting, which the military men among you, such as George, recognize as a weapons mount. Oh. And underneath the dirigible, there is a cloth and wood quadruplane this is a good suspended from a clamp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The, 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 we'll take a look at it with a spyglass and try to determine you know is it a conventional zeppelin uh, or or is it you know the, the, does it look to be well, you know what? I'll 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 hand the spyglass over to Oscar and I say, Oscar, is, is this a, you know, how how advanced is this uh, uh, 
dirigible, is it is it capable of overtaking us? What do you think? <clears throat> okay, I grabbed the. I you're grabbed, catching up to him. Yeah, I grabbed the I grabbed the telescope and uh, I could see that it's gaining on us. Uh, so yes, it's very capable. Looks like we're getting uh, on it. Looks like we're in trouble. Hmm. Right, and if I could have you, if you, if you gentlemen give me perception rolls, boosted by your rank in your various leagues. So that's zero then. Probably. <laughs> Not necessarily. I have, yes. I have yes. one yes. rank yes. in the Royal Geographic. It's perception right. plus that. Okay. So, uh, Okay. Just to possibly identify who it is that, that is out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got four successes out of like six dice. Well, I got rank zero. So that, 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 that doesn't give me that social bonus. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, rank zero, social bonus of one. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. I, I gotcha. have five successes on that, which is pretty good. All these stupid AAA right. games are all five dice and get one, <laughs> one little, little uh, elder sign. Like, oh, no. I, I said. I expect those ones are worn out. You might need some new ones. Oh, I'll buy several. <laughs> yeah. I hear you have a whole stack of them. <laughs> All right. So you have more than enough time as you're, you're, you're creeping up behind it as, as night is creeping up behind you. And you're able to piece together clue by clue, glimpse by glimpse. And this dirigible definitely the expedition put forward by the Royal Geographic Society. Ah. And so far they haven't noticed that you're back here. Ooh. Can you fly underneath it, Oscar? Yeah. Of course. It's, uh, well, it's what You'll be plan. visible if you go under it. What's your plan? Well, I was thinking... We can't like completely disable this thing, but I maybe I could get up there and, and cut their plane loose, and then we'll have that. And if we do it just right, maybe we'll have the plane. Could we not? Uh, can, can you fly the plane? No, no. But that, I mean, if you get the deck right underneath it, I could just go up there and and ah. unhook the ropes, or, you know, unhook what holding uh, it there. Puncture the. Uh... The, the the balloon. I'm not a murderer. Come on, Oscar. I'm just gonna <laughs> disable right. it a little bit. I wasn't thinking of killing anyone, but just kind of like uh, giving them pause to stop for repairs. I suppose I could. If you think they're gonna live, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, just make them lose a little bit of the uh, the gas. Right. Uh, I'm sure they've got like gauges that tell them how much gas is in the balloon, and you know if they're starting to lose some, that would slow them down. That sounds reasonable. You think a knife will cut through that? Yeah, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Now remember. Oh no, I know. I the do. epiphany is significantly larger. Right. And they'll they'll simply be able to watch you doing whatever it is that you're doing, if yeah, you're below I, or beside them. Okay. How far, does our, how far does our crane extend? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, it's designed to be able to reach over the side. Right? Remember, because the, the epiphany doesn't set down. Right? It can never be more than uh, a meter closer to the earth. So it's designed to be able to reach down and, and gently pick up, but also you know, forcibly restrain. So whatever we, large prehistoric monster you wanted. So. Can we can we not fly close enough not to be seen but still be able to extend the crane with Lawrence at the end of it with a drill? I, I suppose we could, <laughs> but this is not very sporting of us, is it now? <laughs> Uh, is there a way we can find to outrun it, or... Oh, we, 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 we can give it full power. 
Well, the batteries right. hold up. Well, <laughs> it would be dicey. You couldn't do it for very long. <laughs> My concern stems mainly from the fact that if we interfere directly with their expedition, it might reflect poorly on our uh, sportsman-like conduct and uh, you know, reflect badly up on, on our press coverage. Whereas a straight up race uh, seems like the more well, advantageous proposition. Yeah, I guess you're right. The more sporting. Well, tell you what, can you at least pilot right. away from it so they can't shoot us with that gun? Yes. Yeah. That's a good idea. Let's, let's, change, let's change course and then uh, avoid them. Or at least get, get far enough away that we know that we're out of range of their gun. Yeah, I don't think there's any way of hiding this boat, but at least we're out of range where they can't hit us. That would be, that would be good. Yeah, can, can, uh, mm, can I determine, are they like on the exact same course as we are, or...? Because uh, are they More headed for, for? Okay, yeah, yeah. So at least they they obviously are heading to South America too. So they have. Yeah, yeah. so they're the making the straight voyage yeah. too. So they've obviously picked up some new information. Maybe they yeah. they've just been following what we're doing. Well, maybe they always had it because part of it was that they were purposely yeah deceiving, right? Trying to to draw attention away from, from so so maybe they, it implies that they do believe the story is real. So, so. Come on, Oscar, I'm not asking you to fly to Antarctica. Just get about a mile away from them and just keep going. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do that. I'm happy to count. Put the lever and we steer away. Increase the velocity. Well, no. One other option that the Epiphany provides is that it has a higher operational ceiling ah. than this Zeppelin. So you could go way over top of them, although there might be some risks involved. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Exactly. <laughs> you go high and the side. Yeah, of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. Come on. Risks. Okay. Yes, we we <laughs> have the best equipment uh, uh, money can buy and the, the, the most innovative airship. All right, uh, go above them then. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can imagine Proctor's response to, to yeah. all of this. <laughs> Proctor doesn't go out and deck much. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's, let's let's test the uh, let's test this this good ship a little bit more. So, I uh, I pull a lever and we start to increase our altitude. All right, very cool. <laughs> Overconfident. Very cool. Yeah. How bad can it be? <laughs> All right. Now, controlling the ship in this way is going to be an engineering check. Uh-oh. Okay. The difficulty of this check will be two. There are more things to control. Okay. You got to communicate and coordinate with the with the engine room. And uh, so someone with you might be able to coordinate and provide assistance to make sure that that happens by yelling down the pneumatic uh, the Matic tube. We can do that. Okay. Okay. So does that give me a, a extra couple of times? Or? If someone wants to help you out, I don't know. I would love to help them out, yelling down the tube to the engineering. <laughs> Barking orders. You're not yeah, going to be uh, in the engine room. Oh no! Yeah, I'll be in the engine room. Yeah, that's oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'll yell the orders. All right. Fine. Yeah. Don't tell me what to uh, do. This is nice to be rolling 10 dice now. It's good thing you invested all that extra in engineering. Yes. Alpha and Alpha and Beta come, you know, steaming into the into the bridge, you know, begin closing big relays with their 
you know, mechanical clamp hands and, uh, you know, they're, they're Alpha's head turns to worry with his eyes blinking in this kind of waxy, scratchy voice saying, this usually works. Good luck. <laughs> like, oh, intimidation works for orders. So yes, it's for orders. I'm, yeah. I'm fit for yelling down the tubes to the engine room. <laughs> All right. So your engineering plus two extra dice from George as he's bellowing for compliance from the engine room. Okay, here we go. Wow. Well, 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 well. <laughs> uh, Congratulations, uh, gentlemen, AAA games. Uh, you could be there, they've done it again. Ten Tell dice, ten, ten dice uh, three successes. <laughs> oh, my God. Available only on AAA's.com. I've, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> three successes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Robin has to ship those dice over to Korea <laughs> and get a fresh, fresh pack yeah. off the shelf. Yeah, you know. <laughs> because, uh, these ones are slightly soiled now. <laughs> Experienced. Yes. They're worldly. All right, so down in the engine room, there are now some extreme demands. So, you know, blue lightning is dancing across the tops of the of the banks of of batteries, and the the dynamo is is whirling and interacting with with the fans and the, the whole assembly is beginning to shake. And interestingly, the bank of batteries begins on its own, peculiarly, to levitate just a little bit. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this... Did you see that? Look at that. <laughs> There's a, a harmonic resonance happening, but you can already hear that it's it's shift shading more toward disharmony than harmony because not all the batteries are up to this task and you'll have to modulate them. Now the, the smoothness of the engineering and, and piloting job from, from the top deck has made your job a little easier. Not as easily as we would expect with 10 dice, but a little bit easier. And so you have one bonus die for the smoothness of the transition to a higher altitude. But the, the batteries are taking on the load of, of energizing the paint so that you're higher up off the ground, but they're also uh, providing specific propulsion from the, from the fans. And this is tasking some of the weakened batteries too much. Now, Percy has dove under the desk and, uh, you know, Grover is thoughtfully putting the lid back on the teapot <laughs> so is there a straight up uh, chemistry oh. roll? The wedge, the wedge this wedge. is a straight up chemistry roll unless you think something else would uh, be able to synergize with it. Not a damn thing. <laughs> or you got to buy it. Yeah, I don't I see anything either. No. Well, actually, to be honest, yeah. athletics. A less oh. athletic individual right. would not be able to get where they need to go around all of these banks yeah, the, of the, electro the, carbon the, the, automatons, the automatons are moving slowly so you know you have to push them out of my way make, like this make one up for that yeah this one's starting to glow too much i'm going there you know pulling that down so I'm, you know, biasing <laughs> these batteries as fast as i can oh so good that's all right that's exactly right so I synergize and Thank God I synergize because, uh, let's see, yeah, three successes. I think Anthony's frozen, but look, he's frozen with a smile on his face. No, he's happy that, you know, back, there we back. go. He's back. Three successes. I'm here. I didn't see that you rolled, but it's nice that you got three successes. Okay. okay. I rolled, right, guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I rolled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The viewers at home know I rolled. <laughs> For some reason, I shifted from one of my house networks to another of the house networks, and so I'm going to try and shift back. 
come back to us, Anthony. All is forgiven. Very good. All right. I think this one is better. Yes, it is much better. Higher resolution. Yeah. Well, that's nice. I'm I'm so sorry I missed that triumph. So, there is an ability to achieve a a temporary harmony which continually gets out of sync. And so, our thrill seeker. How tough is he? How much endurance does he have? How long can he keep it up? The oh, pilot, with his three successes on his ten dice, has orchestrated this very shallow, very nice, but not very <laughs> quick rise and fall arc, which is going to keep you busy for quite some time. And so I need... An endurance check, which is double your body. Oh, right. That's how you suppose. Yeah, I suppose athletic doesn't help here. So. Mm-hmm. Athletics certainly can help if you have four or, well, if your athletics is better than double your body, you can just use it. Oh, yes, that's what I'm going to do then. Because that's, that's seven dice. That's much better than double my body, which is only All four. Right. Oh, no, it's actually six. So, yeah, there's just, just really That would one. be six. So it's not, not hugely better, but it's better. One die is one die, man. It is. All right. All right, three successes on seven dice. All right. Excellent. Okay. So you have managed to, as far as you know, avoid the peril of the Royal Geographic Society dirigible. Yeah, I don't see any bullet holes come through here. (laughs) (laughs) And it's probably just as well that you didn't try to damage the ship. There may be people that you actually know from the Royal Geographic Society aboard the dirigible. So, you know, not killing your allies and and former associates is a good thing. Whatever the, the conflict between uh, the higher-ranking officials of the RGS and and Neslinger and Challenger, whatever their their conflict is, it doesn't have to extend down to the lower ranks. And you have demonstrated, you know, and Tender Singh and Ann Smith and Percy are all sitting there and they're they're sharing their notes about this dramatic event and they're 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 scripting it out. And uh, yeah, it's almost exciting enough. To, to put a spark of life in Tanvir's otherwise blasé eyes. <laughs> At least this feels mm-hmm. much better than just trying to fight or sabotage. It feels more sportsmanlike, really, what it is. Because it is the same society, so. You know. Yeah. Good call. Minute best right. win. And at no time, <laughs> Percy, at no time did we even consider <laughs> sabotaging. <laughs> <laughs> I should put that down. Because, because that's the type of men we are. Yeah. Men of honor, valor, men of we weren't going to we weren't going to winch Lawrence out on a crane, and we weren't going to drill a hole in that dirigible. <laughs> yeah, the crane was <laughs> Okay. So without significant other misfortune thanks to all of your preparations thanks to your excellent crew you're able to avoid the northern atlantic storms you're able to avoid the uh, the equatorial storms as you're you're heading uh, south and pretty much on time five six days you are ready to make landfall where you more or less have chosen uh, near the mouth of the Amazon. Jean-Claude has baked a fantastic cake, the likes of which has never been seen in any aerial vessel. (laughs) Beautiful. Thank you, Jean-Claude. Imagine uh, Grosvenor getting on famously with with John, John Claude. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> they have coordinated 
<laughs> this uh, beautiful cake, absolutely wonderful cake, Jean Claude. Oh, look at look at the fondant. Look at the <laughs> look at the marzipan. It's amazing. Perhaps you did you not do the little swirls for the air current? <laughs> 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 Why you could not miss the little squirrels. Lovely work. amazing work. Oh oh so beautiful. <laughs> you may lick the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so with cake and champagne and fresh strawberries you celebrate uh, arrival in the, the hot and humid coastline of Brazil. Right. And a, you know, a very small congregation of, of, of boats is watching and waiting for your arrival. And, you know, they're, they're signaling and um, congratulations from the Travelers Club. Mm. Fantastic. Smashing. You see, we told you five, six days. This is fantastic. I'm waving exuberantly. <laughs> getting out on some of the some of the rigging, you know, on the outside of the ship, holding <laughs> on, waving. Nice. Are you getting all this, Percy? Scribble, scribble, scribble. Now, with this this small little flotilla of of boats of you know welcome boats you can see a very overdressed very stiff gentleman you know he's wearing a, a a white suit and everything about him just screams you know he's an attache for some embassy or or something along those lines and uh, you know he's, he's perfectly and impeccably dressed even though it's it's so hot i mean he must just be there must be runnels of, of sweat but he's obviously refusing to sweat And uh, he's waiting for uh, you know to welcome you to yeah. to the area. Yeah. Um, take her down, Oscar. Let's uh, uh, let's uh, receive our welcoming committee. Yeah. And so uh, uh, George is you know with pith helmet and full explorer gear <laughs> regalia. <laughs> <laughs> Captain yeah. Captain Danvers, right, who is one of the alternate uh, pilots, says, uh, permission to speak freely. Permission granted. I believe, sir, that we should post a guard. Uh, yes, okay. What well, was that chap called? Uh, Flynn. Let's get Flynn. Yes, sir. He has proven to be very good at whipping the men into shape. <laughs> Excellent. Should I issue firearms? Mm. Yes. Ah. We're in a we're in dangerous territory here. And Tanvir can keep an eye as well. On the... Oh yes, yes, I think. Firearms and machetes, yeah. the whole thing. This is a yeah. dangerous place. Are you getting this all down, Percy? <laughs> they acted with caution and boldness. <laughs> exactly. It's an excellent idea. The last thing we want to do is have this mucked up. Yes. Yeah. Plus, it, plus, it looks dramatic. So, let's see how well Oscar can handle the ship to settle it in uh, without. Uh, a huge house to anchor it to. Oh, that's true. Okay. <clears throat> Was there anything to anchor it to? Well, well no. I guess not. No? But I, I would assume that, that we might just have our own anchor. Well, yeah. So we just, you know, bring it down, hover off the ground. It's kind it. of a ceremonial anchor. Yeah. <laughs> You know, get Flynn to drop the anchor off the edge of the the ship, and we'll be good. So, yeah. okay, here we go. Make it happen. So, uh, 
That's one success. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, give me a second. Got to do a thing. Now, it's funny, because I was about to say I was, I was going to be on a rope underneath the ship, you know, waving. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, one success is a no successes. And even no successes is a, you know, a kind of success. <laughs> so this is definitely not a smooth and seamless, you know, it's not, you know, coming in at a nice arc and slowing in the right place and being in the right place kind of of entry. Right? Yeah. You have this beautiful beach with a, a jungle backdrop and the river off in the distance. We have a, a small pavilion, a tent set up, uh, some royal society or, or another. It's hard to tell from the I've air. Gone, I've so, gone through the tent. I've gone through the tent. That's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe, maybe this upsets the table with Jean Claude's cake <laughs> on it. <laughs> no, no, that's no. a serious. No, that's that's like a failure consequence. I think. You know, yeah, that's a serious that would, consequence. That would be too hard. Serious yeah. negative consequence. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a second. We overshoot the landing, landing site, and the, the, the downdraft from, from the fans uh, flattens the tent. And, and, uh, but, but there is no sign of emotion on the face of the delegate from you know, whatever British society uh, this white suited gentleman is. He just you know, very stoically accepts uh, everything. And he's waiting. You know, in the designated greeting zone where he's expecting your gangplank to, to drop down, uh, he's waiting there to greet you and welcome you to Brazil. Uh, but I sent I sent you the gangplank, the gangplank. I will I, I will now slide down a rope <laughs> and plop myself in front of him. All right, Lord Garibaldi, glad to meet you, old chap. As he extends his hand, yes, it's, it's, it's very good to meet you, too. And he has one of those, you know, very bushy uh, mustaches. And he he greets you as, as John St. John Smythe. St. John. Terribly sorry about the, the, all that, but she's a dangerous girl. Got a mind of her own. Takes a real nerves of steel to handle this ship. He's a representative of the Royal Cartographical Society. Uh, oh. and was notified notified several weeks ago uh, about your destination and has arranged this this welcome. He's quite quite pleased with himself for predicting where you would make landfall. He's all puffed up about it, and he really wants to meet the captain. So he's he's not showing how slightly disappointed he is to be talking to Garibaldi. <laughs> of course. What did we say the captain of this was? Hmm. Well, we I, I piloted the ship into into here, so I'll I'll, I'll come down the gangplank and uh, be oh, dear God. looking around, uh, checking the ship. As you can see, my landing was perfect in every way. <laughs> George looks the most yes. like a captain. He does have a rank. <laughs> so Smythe makes his way over to, to Oscar with a hand extended. You know. Ah. Good show. Uh, good show. Welcome. I, I shake his hand and say, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, this, uh, it's been an interesting trip. And uh, we're glad to, uh, to, to land here in Brazil. This is Brazil, isn't it? You have arrived exactly where I predicted you would. Uh, good, good job, sir. I did have refreshments, but they seem to have um, succumbed to inclement weather. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Uh, just a cup of tea would be good. Would be good. Well, I did understand that you had a very famous chef traveling with you. Oh, yes, we have Jean-Claude. Jean-Claude, show him your cake. <laughs> show him your cake. <laughs> in, my, in, in, my best, in my best pretend French accent, which, which in fact Garibaldi is doing. Show him your cake, Jean-Claude. Yes. <laughs> 
So, grab the uh, key. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Key coming right up, sir. I'm a, I'm a very long way from home in this in this in this assignment, and uh, such things would be welcome. He says, hinting broadly that he'd like to be invited aboard. Come on, come on, we can meet. Give me George. Hey, what did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> oh, well, we, we landed, we broke a lot of stuff, and uh, I, I went down. We've talked to John Singh. Sing? What's that middle name? Sinjin. Sinjin Smythe, who was a representative ah. of the Royal Cartographical Society. And, uh, and he really kind of wants, and the, we get the impression he really wants to meet the captain. So he's met us. <laughs> But the captain is not that He was quite pleased to meet Oscar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not so happy with me, but yeah. So, so I, I'm being presented as the captain then? <laughs> um, we imagine you might have your military uniform on. So yeah, yeah, probably, sure. Probably so, would uh, identify you as the first and, in charge. And, and I am, I guess, among the three of us, I'm the senior member of the of the society, right? I'm the highest ranked. So, yeah, of course. Uh, so, yeah, of course I go uh, meet uh, Mr. St. John Smythe. Um, I think we'll bring him aboard the ship. Oh, excellent, excellent. Come on, have Even a look better. around. <clears throat> yes. Uh, I welcome him aboard. Welcome to the Epiphany, uh, 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 Mr. Smythe. Uh, uh, he's just about to ask Oscar for permission to board, and then he catches sight of of your brilliant uniform, <laughs> and he bites down on his tongue, and then is 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 welcomed. He's he's ecstatic, although none of that shows on his face. But this is the way his mustache quivers that you know mm -hmm. that he's ecstatic. Yeah. And uh, to be invited aboard. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, oh, and you. As you can see, we've completed uh, the first leg of our journey in this transatlantic voyage. Uh, and exactly arriving exactly where I predicted you would based on the on the charts and maps that you requested. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, it was, uh, of course, uh, uh, important to accomplish this first leg to establish some records of uh, uh, travel uh, along with our uh, uh, gracious uh, uh, Another one of our gracious patrons, the uh, Travelers uh, Society, uh, but uh, uh, the main uh, thrust of the expedition is yet before us, uh, the uh, attempt at locating this uh, uh, fabled plateau and... Uh, yes. yes, 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 the survivors. <laughs> uh, still, still not well enough to be brought here. And I wasn't certain if you wanted to go directly <laughs> on the mission or if you wanted to spend time uh, in what we're calling civilization uh, to speak with them directly. But uh, you know, we took very careful records of their notes and sent them on. I, I don't know, uh, even after their delirium breaks, I don't know how useful speaking to them would be. But... Uh, you certainly are welcome to to stay and 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 entertain. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, and be entertained by us uh, to the best of our ability in in our in our situation here in this place, far from the lights of London. So, question: We we didn't get the detailed notes, did we? Because that's that's part of the information that's being suppressed, right? Suppressed, right? Yeah. Uh, I am afraid we were, uh, how can I put this, uh, not privy to the uh, uh, detailed records before our expedition set sail. Uh, That's but, preposterous. Uh, I suppose you know, there, there may have been some mishandling of records or something at the society. Uh, would you happen to have a copy of this? Uh, of these notes that we might uh, peruse. Well, well, certainly, I, certainly, I'll be able to uh, deliver them here or uh, 
whatever arrangement you'd like to make. Um, that would be splendid. I mean, the the less time that we uh, delay in uh, uh, you know advancing the next leg of our journey, I think the better it would be in the end for everyone concerned. I can tell you that this is an excellent spot uh, from which to launch. And uh, the the condition of the of the two men was was quite horrific, and the fatalities among the party. They had a group uh, almost twenty strong, only two surviving. Uh, they showed signs of of having been poisoned, uh, possibly from something that they they ate or came in contact with. They had. Uh, snake bites, which they had attempted to to remedy, uh, but they succumbed to some some terrible uh, some some terrible disease from whatever unknown uh, quarter of the of the jungle that they they found themselves in. But all they could talk about, all they could talk about was the winged death. Oh, oh. Are you getting all this, Percy? <clears throat> well, well. <laughs> Perils that no civilized man has ever had. <coughs> Winged death. That doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't. You're out on the deck of the Epiphany. You know, it, it's it's evening. You can hear all kinds of animal life, indescribable animal life. You know, the the big game hunter is leaning up against the railing. You know, and he, he's talking with his retinue and, and Jean-Claude is watching his cake melt and, and uh, you know, there's frogs and, and birds and, and other chittering things as you, you're hovering there around treetop height, let's say. Yeah, yes. yeah we well, of course have. And that's what it happens. Uh oh. Just as uh, John St. John Smythe is is talking with you about uh, you know, the, the winged death. Where he gets this abstracted look on his face, and his his hand is reaching up toward his neck, and you've seen appear there as if it oh. just appeared a little sliver of wood oh. just below. Here. And he he says, oh, "Oh my!" and keels over backwards. And this is where we will end the session for today. Yes. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> Poison dart. Poison dart. To yeah. the neck. Awesome. <laughs> Mr. Smythe, late of the MI6. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mentioned uh, in dispatches. Uh, <laughs> To the last. Uh, but I'll catch him as he falls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, you get one experience points for showing up. Yay. Do you feel at any point that you were in danger? Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, I mean, we, we did the, uh, the, the climb above, which could have been gone sideways, we were accosted by uh, attackers in the prologue section of the, of the okay. voyage, we right? So everybody got accosted by ruffians. So yes, danger definitely. We avoided being, 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 mm. being beaten up. So. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I think uh, had I not thrown that teapot, I'm pretty sure that like I wouldn't have looked quite as good in the photograph. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was essential to the survival of his master by having the teapot ready. <laughs> there was, yeah. Prepared All right. So, a point for danger for each person. And there were very clever solutions to your problems. And I liked the, the insistence on uh, not stooping to violence. Uh, so I'll give you a point for that, for clever solutions. Now here's one of the weird points, the ones that are very often not earned. Uh, the learning point, did, did the character learn anything or, or, well, 
feel that there's there's something that's helping them develop or change in some way because of these experiences. Let's start with Robin. Uh, you probably would have learned a little bit more about piloting, I think, as he's exposed to that, maybe even engineering, uh, hmm. being around such a an advanced uh, craft. I'm sure there's something that you might have picked up along the way. Giving him lots of ideas. All right. I'll go for that. One point for that. Uh, George. Mm. I don't know. Go with Lawrence first because I need to. Because, yeah, I mean, a <laughs> lot of things happen, yeah. but uh, learning in the sense of personal growth or learning in the sense of, you know, personal or professional growth, yes. I think you possibly learned that he's still uh, very confident in himself because of the, <laughs> <laughs> because of the, the whole uh, fight scene with, uh, uh, with Tanvir, where uh, mm-hmm. it just reinforced the, the blasé nature. <laughs> Of the, the leader of men. Yes. So maybe settling certainly uh, didn't uh, shake his belief <laughs> in himself. Yeah, I don't know, because he's pretty overconfident to start with, right? So yeah. So I think he took all the think about it? It's, it's Let's check on. Because I, I don't know if it's learning, right? Because, you know, I figured out that, you know, the, the, the best course of action is to turn these attackers into workers for <clears throat> us uh, I, but I, that doesn't really qualify as learning right it, it, uh, that's what I'm saying I'm trying to figure out well have you developed this character in the area of leadership I think so in terms of Taking the upper hand in the uh, you know the hiring of the of the crew and the uh, barking orders to the engineer, barking orders you know the diplomacy aspects of you know the... right because that that's my that's that's kind of my point we have diplomacy which is sweet talking we've got uh, intimidation which is which is giving orders what about straight up you know, leadership. And, uh, well, I think leadership is a balance of all of those because there's diplomacy involved. There's, you know, having the eye to identify potential, like turning the enemy into possible allies. I think that's a quality that requires leadership, right? You need to have some vision to get that done. Uh, uh, and it's a balance of intimidation and diplomacy and persuasion. Right. And so we got him to turn around and work for us instead of beating us up. Right. So there was a display of force, uh, a recognition of value and a persuasion to our side. So. So, you know, so are you saying you don't want the point? I do want the point. So I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to classify that as learning. So, yeah, OK, I guess I a little bit about Leadership? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, you can have it. And Lawrence Garibaldi. Yeah, I think he learned or had reinforced it's not what you do, it's how you look when you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and did it get did did somebody see it? Did somebody that's, see it? That's very important. Yeah. It's important to be seen yeah, and it's important to look about well. Developing followers and things along those those lines. Yeah, I think it's did you see that? That's Lawrence Garibaldi. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So that's one round of, of learning about these characters and, and figuring out in what direction you want to take them. So that's the experience points for this session. Uh, you can hoard them or you can spend them between now and the next session. It's up to you. Experience point costs are in the book. Before we close, and I don't have very much time, uh, I was just curious what you think could or should happen next time. You know, if if, if this were a a, a, uh, 
a cliffhanger, you know, cinemascope reel in the in the movie in the movie houses. What would they tease us with as happening next week? What do you think is going to happen? Which will probably turn out to be a lot. But. I think it might be sabotage of the engines of the Epiphany. Ooh. Or no, no, I, I won't even say sabotage. I would think we'd see the Epiphany making a hard landing uh, into the jungle. So maybe instead of having an easy flight straight to the plateau, uh, there's going to be some complication. Maybe it's the flying F, maybe it's sabotage. Uh, I can imagine uh, a scene of like uh, the, uh, the, the the heroes on the deck of, of the ship uh, not actually seeing what's flying towards them, but maybe the shadow of something flying across a, the deck of the ship and their horror in their faces. Perhaps even... What was wrong with you guys? <laughs> it can't be good. Perhaps even the, the, the uh, big game hunter running through his gun. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not playing burning wheel, guys. Don't give him those kind of ideas. Counterintuitive to provide to the end. You know. I'm thinking that newsreel, like you know, here are heroes, you know, reach the plateau before the Royal Geographical Society and have the big yeah, yeah. Will they, will, will they discover who shot Smythe? <laughs> Well, well, they don't they want to the, same the wing death. Yeah. Well, well, they suffer the same same day. Well, yeah. they've eaten by the mysterious wing death. Well, they discover the lost plateau. <laughs> Join us next week. Will the guards be sufficient to protect the ship while that dock? Will they stay or will they go? <laughs> Is that your dog making that noise? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes one, one of one of my dogs is is. Uh, I said, he's, I, the tension, the tension of the wing death has got him all concerned. <laughs> I thought it was the wing death for a moment. <laughs> hey, Dory, what's up, buddy? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close up our live feed now. Uh, Join us next week. week. Oh, the sky has no limits. Yes. Thank you, everyone. I, I know a few people seem to be watching all the way through. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll return next week with the next exciting. Uh, edition of The Sky Is No Limit.